guys, have you ever wondered what it's like to give birth unmedicated naturally? <sighs> My first baby was born at eight pounds, one ounce, and he was a completely natural birth. That means vaginal, no epidural, no pitocin, nothing, not even an IV. And I gave birth to him at New York's Roosevelt Hospital, which is a birthing center within a hospital. So it's basically on the floor above labor and delivery. So I chose it because I felt like nobody's gonna pressure me to have drugs there. But if something goes wrong, it's just a quick transfer to the next floor to get C-section or, you know, whatever help you need. So I felt really comfortable there. My due date came and went and finally the contraction started. I had been having Braxton Hicks for ages, but finally the contractions kicked in and, uh, and it was, it was a while. It was about 50 hours. I labored at home because the midwife was telling me, you know, they need to be this long contractions, this far apart for this many minutes or hours or whatever. And it just took forever to reach that point. But once I hit that point, it was like, it was fast. So it was like miserable for two full days. Like I couldn't even sleep. The contractions were that bad, but they were just spread out just far enough and not getting closer together. When people ask, what do contractions feel like? What does labor feel like? This is how I explain it. It is like your worst diarrhea cramping plus your worst ever period cramping times five. <laughs> they are so bad, so bad. They made me shake and throw up and just want to die basically, <laughs> I mean, but the thing is, especially with natural contractions, when you're not using, when you're not on Pitocin or anything like that, they are really intense, but then you have like a, f a couple minutes between them. And when you're in between contractions, you feel nothing. You feel completely normal. And so you can drink and eat and joke around and relax. And, um, and so you really can get through it that way. But oh my God, those contractions are bad. And so finally, I reached to the point where I was like, we gotta get to the hospital. And I couldn't get in touch with the midwife. So we just went, we took a taxi. It was like one in the morning or something. I mean, it was like, oh, and we took a taxi. It was like a 30 minute taxi ride through the city and every bump man, oh my God, it was miserable. But we finally got there and then we had to get to the labor and delivery room on foot. And so I kept having to stop every time there was a contraction. And I remember I was frozen like getting out of the taxi. I was just like frozen hanging onto the door for like a minute while I was in a contraction. And I felt so bad for that taxi driver. I'm so glad I did not break my water in his car or throw up in his car. Oh my God. But anyway, finally got there and you go to triage and they measure you. I was five centimeters dilated already and like 80% effaced or something. So I thought it would be quick. Little did I know it would be another 10 hours of this nonsense laboring. And I'm thankful I did not um, get kicked out of the birthing center because you're supposed to progress like one centimeter per hour or you taking too long and they got to kick you out to the regular labor and deliver to give you Pitocin or something. But thankfully it was Christmas day and dead as a doornail in there. And so they were, they were happy to just let me go. I was progressing just super slowly, but first time mom, that's totally normal unfortunately. Um, and so I was so excited to get into the bathtub. They had a bathtub and that was one of the reasons I chose this hospital. But the second I got into the bathtub and I was kind of like buoyant and all I wanted to do would just like, just be like still and not move. And I thought that bathtub was going to be amazing, but I was like a cat. I just couldn't get out of there fast enough. I was just like, Oh my God, I can't do it in here. So my big spot was they had a rocking chair and one of those exercise bouncy ball things. So those are my go-to spots. Loved them, and it, but it's got so gross guys because basically like you have nothing on down there, kind of really gross and they've got like all these pads around everywhere you sit. I mean, if you're thinking about it, you're like, this is humiliating, but thankfully in that moment, you just can't think about it because you're just like, I just am in so much pain and I'm also so excited to see this baby and I'm scared and what's gonna happen. And so you just have all these, thoughts going on and thankfully none of those thoughts have space for the thoughts of oh my god how many people have looked in my lady parts 
today and like what a mess I'm making. <laughs> you just, you don't think about it. And the whole like, am I gonna poop on the table thing? That's one of those fears you have beforehand and during it, you just, you just don't even care. It happens, it doesn't happen, like who cares? Don't ask, don't tell, right? Uh, so anyway, so I was progressing and, and the, the nurse just had me like lunging down the hallways and when I'd have a contraction, they'd make me like hang onto the side rails and like squat down to the ground and swing my hips around, anything they could do to get that baby to drop down. And it just was torture, like torture. I just wanted to sit and like tense up, but they're like, you can't, you have to like, <sighs> relax to let your body relax and let the baby come out and it's just really hard so it is so important to have a team that knows what they're doing and knows how to help you and if you have to hire a doula go for it I didn't and I was lucky that my midwife was awesome and the nurses were awesome and they weren't busy so basically it was just me they were working with Super lucky because it took ages, but finally it was time to push and guys, two hours. It took two hours to push him out and I was exhausted. I mean, 53 hours of being awake. And the conclusion was two hours of like intense pushing. And in your head, I mean, you've never done this before. And I was like, guys, I, I can't do it. Like I actually, I'm not gonna be able to get him out. I, I can't and it's just like you just, talking yourself out of this like I'm gonna fail like what's gonna happen and those they just they're just so amazing those doctors and the midwives and the nurses and everybody is just like lady you have to you're gonna do this you don't think you can but you can and you're going to because what other choice do you have so you're just like oh my god but finally they come out the baby comes out and it's you hear the scream and they check him out and we hadn't found out if it was a boy or girl so it was my husband's job but he totally forgot and they put the baby on me and my bottom hand kind of cupped him and I was like, oh, I know what it is. And then, but then I asked my husband just to uh, tell me just so he could fulfill his job in the delivery room. And it was a boy and then um, I got to cuddle a little bit. We waited for his umbilical cord to stop pulsing. And, um, and then they clipped it and gave him to my husband to do kangaroo care. And that's when they had to stitch me up pretty big time. And that was awful. Again, with no drugs. <laughs> um, they may have like injected some lidocaine or whatever painkillers, but it doesn't doesn't help at all at all. Kenzo never left our room. Basically, we had um, in that in that birthing center you have a queen bed, not a hospital bed. You have a regular queen bed that you deliver on, and then the spouse and the baby, everybody can just stay together. So it was really cool. Um, so I kept the baby and I sent my husband out to get food. I wanted a bagel with lox and cream cheese because I hadn't had lox for the whole time I was pregnant. Uh, so he went out on Christmas day in the snow <laughs> to go do that. And meanwhile, I started feeling kind of lightheaded and kind of, you know, the fuzzies and kind of black and ringing and I, you know, woo, buzzing the nurse like, oh my God, something's wrong, something's wrong. And lo and behold, my uterus wasn't contracting and I was bleeding out. <laughs> Um, so they gave me a bag of Pitocin, which I didn't have for the birth, but I had it after the birth to try to get my uterus to contract and stop bleeding. Um, and it turns out what the problem was, was a full bladder, which was in the way of my uterus contracting. It couldn't contract because my bladder was full. And they were like, can you pee in this bedpan? And I'm like, oh, I'm like so shaking. I have no control over anything because I'm just exhausted from pushing for two hours. And I tried, and I was like, D -d -d no. So they had to give me a catheter to empty my bladder. Uh, again, failing everything. <sighs> was lovely, um, but it worked, and I contracted, and it was fine. But I lost a lot of blood. I didn't need blood, but I lost a lot of blood. And together with the tearing and all that pushing, my recovery was pretty horrible. Like I was like winded going for teeny tiny walks, and Oh, it's just not fun. But, you know, whatever. I had a baby, we were both healthy for the most part. Um, and that is my story. We went home the next day, super fast, only spent one night in the hospital, and breastfed for two years, and then had his twin sisters 
a year and a half after that. So he was two and three quarters when we had his twin sisters and I will link that video below so you can watch their birth story, which they were not natural natural, but they were vaginal. So for his sisters, I got Pitocin to induce them and then I got an epidural, which was amazing. And looking back, I'm like, I wonder if I'd had an epidural with my son, not too early to stall things, but if I'd had it, a bit later on, maybe it would have relaxed me to have had him quicker. But who knows? I mean, you have such a fear of what the possible outcomes can be. If I get an epidural, it could delay labor. It could stall labor. It could cause the baby to go into distress, like all these things. So you're like, no, 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 I'm going to be a hero. I'm going to not get the drugs. I'm going to do this naturally. Like my mother did it naturally. Like as everybody, we could do this. and. And I did it and it was fine, but it was just awful. And the birth of his sisters was so amazing. And so kind of looking back, I'm like, why, why was I so like gung ho on no drugs? But I'm glad I had both experiences. Um, it's cool to be able to compare them and to know what it was like with no drugs, and what it was like with drugs, and what it was like with one baby and what it was like with twins. So I feel lucky to have had both of those experiences. No regrets. Um, Anyway, so that's my birth story, my first baby, all natural. Be sure to subscribe and check out my other videos. I have a few videos about the twin birth, life with newborn baby twins and a toddler, and we have all kinds of more recent stuff like our family travels and product reviews and stuff. So check them out and be sure to comment over on US Japan Fam on Facebook or on our blog. Um, because YouTube shut off our comments, so you can't comment here. Mm, womp womp. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Bye.